focus specifically yeah. on open AI. Obviously, you know, Thrive, uh, kind of very prominent in the latest round. Tell me, how did the deal go down? How did it come to be, Vince? Yeah, I mean, you know, we really first started focusing on the company maybe 18 months ago because there were a number of startups that were really rising with software products with these kind of tools that you could use to do marketing copy or you could create blog posts with them. I think you know many of these companies. And we spent a bunch of time with them and we kind of kept coming back to the fact that they were thin user experiences on top of this cool thing, which was this model, which really no one talked about, at least not mainstream, 18 months ago. And so that triggered us to go spend time with the company. And ultimately, I mean, maybe in the classic Sam kind of way, the way we kicked off the round was he did almost like a closed demo with lots of investors on a couple of calls of the technology they're working on and ultimately GPT-4. And, you know, we were on that call like many other investors. And I think I remember getting off the call and Josh you know, was also there and we looked at each other we're like, wow, like the way companies are going to get changed is going to be incredible. Software is going to look so much different. And we were reflecting on it. And, and that kind of transformation is just so rare in our job. You see company after company after company and so many things seem marginal. But when you see these things that are discontinuous or seem so different, we trigger this inner instinct to pause, focus, reflect. And ultimately, you know, we have to spend more time learning about the financials and the products they're releasing and the customers. But that's what encourages us to really lean in. Can I ask you, you said you're many, one of you know, several firms who saw this. Why do you think they chose you? Because this was one of the most hotly competitive rounds to finance. Why do you think they chose you? Well, you know, I, I think there was a lot of people that said no. So at the end of the day, I, you know, there, as much as I like to think we want a really competitive deal, I do think it was not obvious to everybody. And even now, I don't think it's still obvious to everybody, even folks that use the product. I do think one of the reasons that- Why do you think it's not obvious? Because you have to assume that essentially we'll move from a search interface to a chat interface as the primary UI of engagement. Is that why? Or are there other reasons why it's not obvious? I think a lot of investors get tripped up on trying to be so precise on TAM and market and defensibility and the moats around businesses and trying to map that all to price. And those are so important in the investment decision-making process. But when it's so early in a technology cycle like this, it almost is a little bit more of a venture mindset where there are going to be 50 reasons you can say no, and we're not going to have answers to every question, but we need to really think about the things that can go right. I mean, we're not talking about building the next unicorn or decacorn. We're talking about disrupting search or Google. I mean, that's a trillion dollar opportunity. So sure, I can't put a TAM around ChatGPT. But I can tell you, like, we're not talking about a small prize at the end of the day. And so I think when we say it's not obvious to people, people aren't thinking about it in this lens. They're thinking about it in the box of, you know, what does this chat interface do? And, oh, those use cases aren't that valuable. And I think it does take a, a higher level of creativity or imagination to ultimately think about the world that way. I totally agree with you in terms of applying that kind of different lens and mindset. But then there are also core that you have to do, which we all do when we make an investment. When you thought top down on market analysis, how did you approach top down market analysis when you were sitting with Josh on this one? I go back to as these new technologies scale, it's so hard to be precise about it, Tam. And so more of what we got into the psyche of thinking about is if you looked at other big technology movements and releases, how did they scale? I mean, the iPhone went from a million phones a year, kind of post-launch, to 100 million in five years. AWS took six or seven years to get to $100 million of run rate, but they went from 100 million to 10 billion in like six or seven years. Google went from nothing to 10 billion in the first six years of monetizing. And so obviously this is rarefied error we're talking about. These are three of the most transformational companies on the planet. But the technology, if you really think about it and the zeitgeist it's captured, I mean, it is of that elk, in my opinion, of the transformation it can have of the world. And so for us, again, it's, it's less about thinking about the exact TAM and it's more about if we think about what the world's going to look like in five or 10 years from now, how are we going to look back and say, wow, I can't imagine the world without this kind of thing. And when you have experiences like that, I mean, that's what gets us out of bed. These are the kinds of things that create new categories, new companies. Um, and so I, that, that was what a lot of the discussion was. And, uh, you know, maybe that sounds less precise to people and 
they think it's a little bit too finger in the air. But I think for us, a lot of this is instinct mapped with why it's a really great business.